Is there any point learning to code now that we have GPT-4, which actually codes pretty well? GPT-5 is on the horizon and presumably it will be able to do it even better. What does that mean for human coders? Let's look into that. No wonder people are asking this question when you see reports like this from Goldman Sachs. So first of all, let's find out just how good GPT-4 is at coding. Okay, so watch this. This is pretty impressive. We've got a hard leak code problem here with a low acceptance rate. We'll just copy and paste that question here into ChatGPT. Okay, let's just fast forward through this. I'm sure you get the idea. ChatGPT is going to write some code, which we're going to put into leak code and see if it works. Is it going to work? There. And it comes out with a solution that is in the top 23%. Now that is undoubtedly impressive. Now that's impressive. But there are a couple of points I want to make. The first is that that problem might have existed in the training data that GPT-4 was trained on, in which case rather than solving it, it's just remembering it, which isn't quite as impressive. And the second point is that in spite of what you might be led to believe with technical interviews, software engineering is not about solving leet code problems. <laughs> ChatGPT is very good at coding tricks using code that it's copied from the internet. And that's incredibly useful. It can save you a lot of time. But you can't ask ChatGPT to build YouTube for you or to manage and maintain a, a system that's already live, or to speak to a customer, understand their requirements, and then build a system that solves their problems. To get help with those complex jobs, you need to understand how those systems work. You need to be a software engineer, and then ChatGPT will be a, a great AI assistant for you. But it's nowhere near capable of being able to solve those problems. And if it were, it would be an AGI, and it wouldn't just be software engineers that it could replace, it would be everybody, but it's a language model. It's not a source of wisdom. Problem solving, critical thinking, originality, they are still the domain of humans because they require much more than just copying and rewriting what's already known. And if you want to see a good example of this, just ask ChatGPT or GPT-4 to write you an essay and then compare the results to an essayist like Christopher Hitchens. There is no comparison. But I think, is it going to replace software engineers? Is the wrong question. The right question is how can I use these models to augment my own skills? Let me give you a concrete example. Imagine you're a complete novice at coding and you want to create a Python script that can, I don't know, maybe convert one video format to another. You could ask ChatGPT to write a script to do that for you and you can run that script and it may or may not work. If it doesn't work, you can take the error message and put it back into ChatGPT and start an iterative process where you work towards a solution. And in this case, ChatGPT becomes a strange and slightly unpredictable compiler, which takes natural language, converting it into Python code, which you can then run. And in the process, you learn how to problem solve. You learn how to refine the prompt to get the output that you want. So it's quite a similar process to learning to code. The other benefit is that you actually start writing useful scripts, which isn't what usually happens when you start to learn to code. For the first few months, you don't do anything useful at all, really. And that can be quite demoralizing for people. And that's often when people give up. So carry on with your computer science degree, carry on with your software engineering training, carry on learning to code. GPT-4 is not going to take your job. It's just going to be a really useful assistant for you. Are you ready to harness the power of AI and stay ahead in the tech world? If the answer to that is yes, then you're going to love Brilliant.org, the sponsor of this video. I've tried lots of different courses and I think Brilliant is the best way to learn math science or computer science because the interactivity forces you to think deeply about the subjects. They have thousands of lessons to cater for all skills levels. And this course on neural networks will help you understand the key concepts behind AI. I don't always have a lot of time to study, which is why I really like Brilliant's bite-sized lessons that break down complex concepts into easy to understand parts. The interactive approach makes learning engaging and effective, and I can learn anywhere, anytime on my phone, tablet, or computer. I also love the fact that I'm not just memorizing formulas or equations, Brilliant builds my intuition, helping me become a better problem solver in every part of my life. To get a taste for what Brilliant has to offer, you can try it free for 30 days by going to brilliant.org forward slash Python programmer, or just click on the link in the description. And the first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription.